Fruity, 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 fruity. Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. Hi, it's Emmy. Welcome back to another episode of Fruity Fruits, where I taste fruits that are fruity. Today, I'm going to be tasting breadfruit, which is actually a tropical fruit, but it came to me via Indiana. Kia, who found these at Jungle Gyms in Indiana, sent them to me in the mail. Look at these. And here they are. Aren't they interesting? Now, I wish you could smell them. They have a very... Hello, Chuck. That's my Chuck. I'm in my backyard, if you haven't noticed already. <laughs> Hello. Kind of similar to a cherimoya or a custard apple. A little bit tangy smelling. Tropical fruit smelling. Very, very strong. So these are also related to jackfruit. And they weep this kind of white latex. It's very, very sticky, similar to jackfruit. And when we cut this open, you'll see that the structures inside are also similar to jackfruit. The scientific name is Autocarpus atilius, and they grow in tropical areas, including the Caribbean and Hawaii, where they're called ulu. Now what's interesting about breadfruit, although it is a fruit, it is actually consumed more as a starch, kind of similar to potatoes. Now these examples are a little bit riper, but typically they are picked when they're more green and they can be boiled, but most popularly they are roasted and then afterwards sometimes fried or be added to stews or fried up or mashed or sliced and just eaten as an addition to something like aki or salted cod. So today I'm gonna to be cooking them in a traditional manner and I'm going to be roasting them over a fire. You can also do this in the oven. You can also do it on a gas range, but basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna roast the outside of this, peel it, and then I'm going to eat it. So let's do this. So I've borrowed my boy's wagon and I'm gonna go ahead and build my fire. So I watched a video on the traditional Tahitian method of cooking breadfruit on a fire, and the fire looks to be made pretty small. You don't need to build any embers, a lot of coals, you just build a small fire and place the breadfruit directly on the flames. So, that's what I'm gonna do. And I like to build a little tower. I like to put a little bit larger pieces on the bottom so we make sure we have a lot of good airflow because that is key to building a good fire, you must have very good airflow. Okay. All right, let's start this. Doo, doo, doo. Hi, Chooks. I'm just building a fire. You probably don't want to be around here. Yeah, it's gonna get hot. Yeah, you don't want to be roast chicken. Yep. So we're gonna let that go until the wood kind of ignites and then we'll place our breadfruit. All right, something about a fire. It's just magical, I love it, love it. Nothing better than a fire in the wintertime, even in the summertime. Something so primal and simple about it. Just lovely. It's hot too. I have two breadfruit, I'm gonna place them right on the fire. Place both of those breadfruit right on the fire. So we're gonna cook these until the breadfruit is completely blackened on the outside. Make sure there's enough airflow. And keep adding fuel to this. To make sure the fire keeps going. I suggest if you have them, a pair of very long tongs are helpful. I hear you, Chuck. Are you guys waiting for treats? Is that what you're waiting for? So in terms of doneness, what I've seen is that when the entire breadfruit is charred and black on the outside and when they have kind of a hollow sound to them when they're tapped, should be when they're ready. Alrighty, so I'm gonna tend to this and when they're nice and black, We'll go ahead and eat them. We're getting pretty close to being done. The red fruit are completely charred on the outside. Here are my breadfruit. 
Don't they look amazing? It's just charred to a crisp. And when you tap them, they sound hollow. I learned an indication of doneness is when you poke the breadfruit, if the knife goes in cleanly and comes out without any sticky sap, it's done. So in the video that I watched in the traditional Tahitian method of preparing breadfruit, the woman uses a stick that is shaped and kind of flattened to remove the exterior of the breadfruit. I'm just gonna be using a butter knife, but she does it with a lot of skill. She just kind of pries it off to reveal the meat inside. Look at that, just like a baked potato. This is so cool. It's like a dragon's egg or something. Oops. Yep, I'll share with you when I'm done. Ooh. So we'll separate. Ooh, look, it's coming. So there it is. So there's an example of how it looks similar to a jackfruit. All these little clusters are attached to a central core. Uh, Chuck, what are you doing? You're in the frame. Excuse me. Thank you. Really? She's really interested in the jackfruit. I'll share with you when I'm done. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and give this a taste. Look at this. Looks amazing. Excuse me while I move my chicken. Come here. This is my Ostrawar pen. Go on. Let's go ahead and taste this breadfruit. Look, eat the lucky mouse. Hmm. And for all the tropical aroma, it's actually very neutral tasting. Very light, but it's very starchy. Mm hmm. Has a slight fibrous texture to it. There's a really nice smokiness from the wood fire, but it's quite nice. I keep thinking and wanting this to be a fruit as if it should taste sweet and tangy and citrusy or what have you, but it doesn't. It's much more like a potato or like yucca. If you've ever had yucca root, it's kind of like that. There is a bit of a flavor to it. It's more flavorful than say a potato or even a sweet potato. It's not sweet at all. It's actually quite nice. I want to have it with something else though. Mm hmm It's not sweet at all. Kind of amazing. There's a little bit of bitterness to it. Just kind of at the end. And there you have it. Breadfruit. And now I understand why they call it breadfruit. It's much more like a starch or an accompaniment to a dish rather than a fruit, even though it is a fruit that comes from a tree. Mmm. <laughs> Meow. Go on. This is also prepared in a recipe called an oil down, which I love that name, in which the breadfruit is cooked in coconut until the coconut is cooked all the way down until there's almost no liquid whatsoever and reduced down to the coconut oil, hence the name oil down. Isn't that great? So there you have it, wood roasted breadfruit. Big thanks to Kia for sending this to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out the Fruity Fruits playlist so you can see more interesting fruits from around the world. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. <laughs>
Oh. You want some more? 